What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Winter W. I'm your host, today, Ron Medina, and I thank you all very much for joining me here today because today I'm reviewing the movie Bull Shark. This is the brand new B22 film that's actually available right now on Amazon Prime where you can rent it and buy it. And I do know that this movie will be released on DVD in April, but no release date has been revealed as far as when it will be released on DVD in April. But I had the opportunity to check out this film. So I'm going to get give a bit of a backstory about how I learned about this film. I spoke with the writer-director of the film, Brett Bettman, on my show, You're So Cool with Rob Medina, last year. During that conversation, he had revealed that they were finishing up on a crazy little shark film that uh, at the time was called Blood in the Water, and it was going to go through a, a new name uh, as it gets closer to the release date. And honestly, the first thing that crossed my mind when he said crazy little shark film was sci-fi. And I'm a big fan of Brett Bettman's work. I love the film 90 Feet from Home, which I think is, is, is his absolute best film that he's done so far. And I love Rodeo Thief as well, which I think is his second best film. And he's also done a lot of great movies too. Copper Bill. Um, I think he did a great job with Meteor, Honor Mode Things, just to name a few. So the idea of him taking on a, a film that deals with sharks in a small little town in Texas, I was a little hesitant to be completely frank, but I was still very much interested in seeing what he was going to pull off here. I was very curious, but he also did say that the film was going to be dealing with the subject matter of alcoholism, alcoholism, I'm going to say in this movie. And then I also had spoken with the editor of the film who also serves as the cinematographer and the VFX artist and Jeff Hamm on my show with You're So Cool with Rob Medina last year as well. And he had revealed that the reason why they had to change the name from Blood in the Water to Bull Shark was because um, Blood in the Water has a very negative connotation in a lot of markets. So in order for them to be able to release this movie in those respective markets, they had to change it to something else uh, completely different. And Bull Shark was the, it sounds like it was the best option. And I actually didn't mind the title. I actually thought it was, it was a very fitting title. But Blood in the Water, I, in my opinion, I thought was a much better title. But I understand the circumstance, so it is what it is. So as I said earlier, I was a little hesitant about the film but i was still very much curious and i honestly did like the film quite a lot actually it was and to be completely frank it, it was a lot better than i was than i was anticipating a lot of it does have to do with um the direction of the story that we're following here with the, with the character of spencer that, that's pay, being played by tom hallam but i'm already kind of jumping the gun here right now so i will be getting a little bit into the plot um no spoilers of course i will get into my positives my negatives and then of course my rating the story of Bull Shark follows a man by the name of Spencer Timms, played by the actor Tom Hallam, who is the game ward in the small town in Texas, who also turns out to be an alcoholic. A young woman is killed by a shark at the lake in the small town. The mayor and the sheriff of the town do not want the story to break out, as there is an upcoming election approaching, and they do not want to tarnish their chances of getting re-elected. So they task Spencer with the responsibility of taking out the shark by any means necessary before things escalate. And that right there is the film in a nutshell, so now let's get into my positives. My first positive is with the actor Tom Hallam. For those that don't know, I'm a very big fan of the actor, and I've been a fan from the films he's done through B22 that are, were all written and directed by Brett Benman. And the one film for me that really made me a fan of him is a short film that he had done called Frog, which I loved that movie, but I loved his performance. That performance made me a fan of Tom Hallam. And from that point on, I, I told myself that anything that Tom Hallam does, I'm going to watch because I love what he does in the films he's worked on. And this film was no different. So I was very looking forward to see what he was going to do, especially considering that this is a, a character that he's playing who is an alcoholic. I was curious to see the direction that they were going to be taking in terms of the alcoholism that this character is dealing with here. So I wasn't sure if he was going to be like a violent drunk or just one of the drunks that just uh, causes chaos and by breaking things and just acting all wild. But in fact, he's the total opposite of that. I actually like the idea that they, they kept the character uh, kind of a sluggish drunk, where the more he drinks, the slower he gets, and just, you know, he starts to, like, uh, fall into, a, uh, into uh, it falls asleep, I meant to say. So th there's really nothing exciting in, in terms of what he, what he does when he's drinking. He's actually slowing himself down in a lot of ways. So it's actually very uneventful, if that makes any sense. But what, the other thing I also wanted to point out, too, is that what I loved about his performance in that film was that you can clearly see that this guy is struggling with his with his alcoholism. He has a very hard time stopping. There even comes to a point where his sponsor comes in and points out that you are near 100 days of sobriety. What happened? He was like, I, I don't know. And then his wife is over, also coming over too to get him to sign these uh, divorce papers. And she also points out that in the beginning, he was never liked. He was actually a very nice guy, very easy to get along with, very fun to be around. But somewhere along the way, something had changed where he started drinking and it just consumed him. 
and to the point where she wants nothing to do with him in as far as her and him in a relationship but you can clearly see that she does love him but she's very pissed off at him because he's always irresponsible when it comes to the drinking and it, it, it just ruins everything but we don't really get to see anything about or hear anything about him to say uh, if whether or not he's actually uh, violent or anything of that sort because you do get to see that he's uh, uh, he's around his son and it looks like they have a pretty good relationship so I don't think that we have there's any indication that he was a very bad person when he's drinking it's just that he acts a fool when he drinks and then falls apart and falls asleep that's pretty much it because that's what you saw in this movie so there is a complexity about this character too where you know that he is struggling he wants to stop but he just can't he's just addicted he has a big problem and he has to find something to help him to overcome this addiction. And at the same time, there happens to be a, a shark attack in the small town that he's in, and he's got to deal with that as well. But it, it seems like everyone, as far as like the uh, the local um, the local government, if you will, everyone's fully aware this guy's an alcoholic. But he seems to be doing just uh, well enough for him to be able to keep his position. But it's obvious that they're they're that they are fully aware that this guy has a drinking problem but yet somehow he's able to keep his job so i found that to be a little odd I'm not saying that was a negative in the movie but i just found that to be a little strange but it seems like he's good enough to be doing what he's doing despite his problem the other positive i'm going to point out uh, is with billy blair for those that don't know i'm a very big fan of billy blair i've been a fan of him ever since i saw the film cherokee creek i loved what he does in this what he does in that film but i also love every single part that he has uh, under the B-22 productions that I've seen him in. With with the movie like uh, Copper Bill, I thought he was fantastic in that movie. The Rodeo Thief, I thought he was fantastic in. Um, Operation Overlord, I loved him in that movie. And he had a, a small little cameo in Buckskin, but that's a pretty straightforward performance. There's really nothing uh, too uh, quirky about the, that character that he's playing there, but uh, it was nice to see him in the movie because I'm a big fan of Billy Blair. But in this film in particular, I thought he was so, so good in this movie because what I love about having Billy Blair and Tom Helm work together is they have great, and I'm talking about fantastic chemistry together. These guys, in my opinion, should be doing like a like an action buddy uh, type of uh, film where whether it be a cop movie or, or, you know, these guys are like bumbling or, or I should say not bumbling, but you know, thieves that are working to, in, a, in a, some sort of partnership. Just something to see these guys work together in this capacity where they still have that, like, they're, they're two different personalities, but yet they work very well together, but they're always bickering at one another. And this film definitely does that very well, as well as the film uh, that I've seen before called Operation Overload, which I love their chemistry in that film there. I, I just love how these guys work together. And I can go on and on about that. So uh, that was one of my favorite aspects aspect about this film that I really took away from because both Tom Hallam and Billy Blair work so well together. Now, as far as the, the use of the shark in this film, I actually didn't mind it at all. Uh, I will point out that um, there was a part of me that was wondering how this was going to play out in the movie with regards to how the shark got there and uh, how they're going to be able to pull off this story considering it's a very low budget film and that it's, it's, it's quite obvious they're not going to be using a lot of uh, people f to shoot on the lake because it's a very difficult task to even pull off uh, where you need to have everyone's cooperation. It's, it's just a lot of work. As Brett and Jeff have both revealed that it was very difficult to shoot this film on water, and I can understand why. But I also understand, too, that knowing that this is going to be a low-budget film, I do know that Brett, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm going to say that Brett had to find a way to be able to make the story very um, realistic considering the budget uh, constraints that are in place for this film and the limited amount of time that they have to shoot this movie to be able to make it a very cohesive story, to make it very, um, to, to make it realistic, very uh, believable in a lot of ways. And I actually did think he did a really good job in accomplishing that. And I really do mean when I say that. I do know there may be some people who will probably look at this film and be dismissive about it. Um, and I can understand why, but I don't think they should do that because I think with what he was being able to pull off with this movie and try to keep it as grounded as possible, even though it deals with a shark in a lake in Texas, you know, it's there's a, there's a whole explanation about how uh, how certain sharks are able to go into fresh water when they more than likely won't be able to survive. Um, so I don't know the whole science behind all that too. I'm sure Brad had, did his research and tried to infuse that in a, a very um, uh, in, a, in a very realistic fashion. But 
despite you know me not knowing that stuff, I took it on face value with what was being explained in the film it made sense to me and I didn't have a problem with it at all. In fact, I thought it was very much fitting to the story. And there was a lot of things that Brett, I believe, had done a really good job with in bringing um, characters with these scientific backgrounds, with these uh, these educated backgrounds, with this type of uh, field uh, dealing with uh, sharks and waters and different type of waters and whatnot. And they have some um, some information that they can provide to the mayor, to the game ward, among many other people as well. Uh, especially when it comes with the mayor trying to hush everything down with regards to the shark attacks that are that's occurring in that small town. So there's a lot of that going on in this movie, and it never once felt convoluted. It actually felt very, very cohesive, and it was also done very, uh, very well, in my opinion. So I got to give a lot of credit to Brett and everyone else involved in making that story seem very fitting to make it a realistic approach with how they're wanting to get the shark into the small little town and, um, and then the chaos that is going to ensue as a result of that. But at the same time, knowing that this movie was a small budget of film, they can't bring in a whole lot of people uh, to shoot uh, a a scene at the uh, in this lake where there's a ton of people swimming around and there's going to be a shark in there as well too, which can be very expensive to pull off. Um, and knowing that they had shot the film for about what seven, nine, eight days, something like that, uh, with one a full day of reach of, of a pickup shot, I believe. So they had a lot of work to do in that short span of short, short span of time. I meant to say, and I think they've done a really good job. So I there's as far as the technical aspect is concerned, and the the amount of work that went into making this movie, knowing what I knowing the little that I knew about what it took to make the film. I, I was actually really impressed with what they were able to pull off here because uh, Jeff, who was responsible in creating the VFX work for the shark here, he was the only guy doing that. And from what I can see, uh, what was done in the film, I got to give him a lot of credit for that. And I hope a lot of people respect that and, and give him his credit for what he's been able to pull off in the short amount of time they were able to work with this uh, for this production. And then as far as the post-production is concerned too, I got to give a lot of credit to these guys because they've done a phenomenal job with this movie. The last pause I'm going to point out um, is that the film, to me, is a very, it's a very character-driven story. I mean, yes, there is a shark in the movie. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, people will have their opinions on the matter. But I think with what Brett and everyone else had done in the short span of time, as I've mentioned previously, they've done a really good job, in my opinion. But the most important thing that I took away from this movie was that this is a very, like I said before, a very character-driven story. You actually, at least for me, um, understand the journey that Spencer's going through and understand his struggle and even though this movie is uh, clocks in around 80 minutes 81 minutes something around there um, you do get a lot of information about who this character is simply by the body language the uh, the turmoil that you see him is that he's going through internally there's a lot of issue this guy clearly has to deal with here and the thing is that you don't really know much about what those issues are, which in some ways I wouldn't say is a negative, but in, to a degree I would like to see a little bit more, which is why I wish this movie was a little bit longer, but I'm not going to point that out as a negative because it seems like with every film that's either 90 minutes or less, I want it to be longer, so I'm not going to use that as a negative anymore, at least for this review. But I, I actually do wish we got a little bit more of that because there was so, so... Um, the, the, the story in my opinion worked very well and the shark is just like you know a, a backdrop it's it's secondary in a lot of ways and and you don't get to see it that much and when you do in my opinion it, it works very effectively but that's gonna be the last of my positive here so now let's get into my negatives so my first negative actually has to do with the relationship between spencer and his son and his wife the reason i'm pointing this out as a negative is because um when Spencer Wife comes in, her introduction is very important where you learn about their relationship and that was a very integral part of the story. The only problem that I have with the relationship was that um, for some reason, I never really felt that that yearning of, I want these guys to work it out. I, for, I don't know why I never felt that way at all about the about these two characters that are trying to, where you can clearly see that Spencer wants to make it work out, where his wife's like, you know, fuck this, I wanna be done with all this stuff. And I understand her point of view, but I never actually felt like, okay, I want these guys to get back together. I'm not sure if that was intentional for, at least for me to feel that way, but I, I would assume uh, that would, Brett probably would like the audience to feel that they you want these guys to be back together. So without getting into spoilers here, but I, I just never really felt that about their relationship. And oddly enough, the it, I felt the same way about the relationship between uh, Spencer and his son. The, the kid that played his son was not bad at all. He was actually really, really good. 
But the time that he's in the film, he didn't really have much of an impact for me. He was actually there for a very short span of time. And then after a while, he, he gets brought back into the story again. And then after that, you don't really see much of him afterwards. So I thought in that respect that I thought that story was going to be handled a little bit better. Uh, it wasn't handled terribly. I don't think that's the case at all. It's just it wasn't really expanded on further. But I, I didn't want to delve too much into that, that. I wanted more time, which I did as using as a negative. But in that respect, I felt like it could have been done a little bit better to get more of a connection with those two characters or in this case with the family. So you can really get a feel for you know for them and wanting them to get back together i just never felt that at all uh, between those three characters now the other negative with the film um this actually kind of goes into the spoiler territory so i'm going to try to be very vague about what it is that i didn't like about it the way the film ended again without revealing any spoilers here i'm sure if brett's watching he'll he'll probably know what i might be pointing out here but with the use of the mayor in this movie i thought it was fine i actually liked how the mayor was using the film. But then after a while, you don't see you don't hear from the mayor again after everything gets handled the way it does in the movie. There was something else I wanted more out of that story that you you are introduced to and it's part of the main storyline, but then after a while, uh, after um, certain events that occur, you don't really hear anything about it afterwards, at least as far as I can remember. So, I felt that that was I felt a little empty with that storyline because I thought it was going to be there's gonna be some sort of proper closure to that particular storyline, which never really gets uh, uh, finalized in this film. So that part I actually did uh, didn't like uh, about uh, it being brought in, and then all of a sudden there's nothing else that comes up out of that, that comes out of it after that. So I think that's gonna be my last negative that I'm gonna point out here because the, there's a, there is actually one other negative that's all in that spoiler territory, which I won't get into here. But I think with what I just uh, brought up here may make sense for some people especially when they watch the film so now let's get into my rating so if you haven't figured out by now i did enjoy this movie i didn't love the film but i did enjoy it quite a lot i liked it a lot but I, I forgot to point out earlier that in my positives i forgot to say that i felt like what brett does his absolute best at is when he's focusing on the personal struggles that a character is going through and dealing with whatever issues that are they're having to deal with whether it be in this case with alcoholism for the, uh, the character spencer uh, but when you look at films such as uh, 90 feet from home um, the rodeo thief and even on honor among thieves as well when you're dealing with a character's personal struggles and you focus on that and you don't have any added elements to that he's at as at his absolute strongest in my opinion and something about his attention to detail with that personal struggle and him providing a message for that story He's really, really good at that, in my opinion. And I'm not saying that having the shark element to the added to the story made it any worse. That, I don't believe that at all. But I did remember thinking that if they just took that aspect of the story out and just focus on his struggle, uh, Spencer's struggle, dealing with alcoholism, trying to get, uh, trying to bring his family back together, you would have had a completely different film. And I hope it doesn't come off the wrong way by me saying this here, but you definitely would have a much stronger movie too. But again, I'm not saying that the movie was not any good. I did enjoy it. I definitely will be buying it on, on DVD when it comes out in April, and uh, I definitely will be watching it on Amazon because I do want to support Brett and everyone who's worked in this film for, for all the hard work they've done. They deserve the attention. They do deserve the respect because clearly making this movie was not easy at all. Brett has made it very known to me, including Jeff, that there was, there was a very difficult project uh, for them to work on, but they were able to accomplish uh, uh, in making a great movie, in my opinion. So with that being said, I give this movie a raise a glass. And those are my thoughts on the film. If you have seen the movie, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And remember, the movie is available right now on Amazon Prime where you can rent it and buy it. And it will be coming out on DVD in April. But as of right now, no release date has been revealed as of yet. So be on the lookout for that. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and make sure you share and like our videos and hit the notification bell while you're down there. Follow us on our social media accounts on Instagram and Facebook, new release Wednesdays, and on Twitter at the NRW. And you can follow me on my social media accounts. I did change my handle though for both Instagram and Twitter. Whereas before on Instagram it was Rob underscore Medina0585. On Twitter, Rob Medina0585. It is now officially as Mr. Rob Medina on both Instagram and on Twitter. And on Facebook, it's still just simply Rob Medina. And I have a show on the channel called You're So Cool with Rob Medina. And you can follow my show social media accounts on Instagram, You're So Cool with Rob Medina. And on Twitter, You're So Cool WRM. And I want to thank you all very much for joining me here today. I hope you guys enjoy this review. And until next time, everybody, stay safe out there and 